someone to convince me that we don't live in a simulation. This is, I've heard you say it. The arguments put forth have been quite convincing okay. to me. And most of the best arguments are traceable to a guy named Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford. Okay. Here's the argument. Ready? Go ahead. Our computing power is growing rapidly. Right. We create simulations of worlds. We have video games with characters that are inside the video game. Right. Imagine a day where you can simulate a world so perfectly with life forms, humans, so well mm -hmm. that you can recreate every single neurosynaptic thought you could have, but now you're in the simulation on the computer. So. Including the perception of free will. Well, there you have it. Because then, so now you would have enough computing power to imbue the sims inside of the program with all of the human traits that we possess now. Correct. Not only our human traits, Not but only, the world. But the world. The world itself. Right. And you don't have to have all the world existing there at all times. Right. That might be an unrealistic amount of computing power. Right. You just need... Enough the, of the world that they see around them. That they see around them. Right. So you want to start digging. and oh, that's so funny. And I haven't put the earth there. Just, there's a flag that goes up in the programmer, and they say, oh, need more earth. And so, right. so they put earth beneath you while you can keep digging. It's like the Truman Show. Yeah, well, for example. For, right. Okay. okay. Cool. Or does Minecraft, you can build or stuff. Or Minecraft. Minecraft, right. Oh, that is Minecraft. Right, right. Okay. God, that guy's a brilliant genius. Okay. So, and we went to the moon. It's okay, let's make sure the moon is there. Right. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why we can't travel faster than the speed of light. Because if we could, we'd be able to get to another galaxy before and they could program, they could program oh, that galaxy. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> so much fun. Oh. oh! So the programmer put in that limit. Put in the limit. Because that's the, the fastest light. they can that's get. The, we can't, we can't oh. program fast oh. enough. Oh. So we put in Chuck. a limiter. <sighs> the speed of light is a limiter so oh. that you can't get to the next thing before we build it. All right, so let me finish. That's good. Go that's ahead. good, Chuck. All right. So let me finish this. So now. So now that world evolves and they develop computing power. Right. And they say, we want to play video games. So now we're going to make a world. So then they make a world and they have sufficient computing power that they invent right. to create a whole universe within their computers. Okay. And then they, they make a world. And then they make a world all the way on down. Right. It could be hundreds, thousands, billions. Infinite. All right, so so far this sounds like it still works. That's right. So now close your eyes, throw a dart. Mm. Which of these universes are you going to land in? The first one that's real or the gazillion that are not? Well, yeah. Just statistically. Am, okay? I, am I drinking when we're playing this darts game? <laughs> okay. Because Because then you miss the entire everything. <laughs> no. So, so yeah, there's, no, something, you're, there's yeah. something called Bayesian statistics where uh -huh. you're allowed to introduce information that you already have available to you even if you didn't measure it to be true. All so right. we establish the likelihood that one day we'll have the power to do this. Right. And then that factors into these statistics. Okay. So there's one in a zillion, you're the real universe, and 999 zillion to one that That's you're a simulation. Your simulation. Uh, that convinced me. And, and I don't want to be convinced. I didn't like it. And I was just begging for somebody to to give me an argument that was cogent enough to undermine that entire reasoning, and I just came across it. Uh-oh, who, okay. Okay, it's a good friend of mine, Rich Gott. All right. Uh, he was a, a colleague of mine back when I was at Princeton. All right. Uh, deep thinker, likes calculating the ends of things. Nice. With Bayesian statistics. He's heavily quoted in this book, The Doomsday Calculation, and William Poundstone is a smart guy unto himself, and I am now convinced. Now you're convinced. Are you ready? Okay, go okay. ahead. What do all these, so here is what convinced me we are not in a simulation. Okay. Are, are you seated? All right, I'm seated. Are you, put, hold on. I'm gonna hold. Okay. <laughs> all right. What do all those simulated universes have in common? They're simulations. They can, they have the power to simulate That's themselves. That's what I'm saying. They're simulations. No, they have the power to simulate themselves. Right. Oh, okay, uh, yes. That's they, what they all they have in common. make a simulation. They have so, that power. Right. Exactly. To simulate themselves exactly. Do we have that power now? No, we don't. No, we don't. Which means that we can't send it. In, we can't send ourselves into the future as a simulation because so we, we don't have that power yet. So we can't continue the chain. Wait, so either we, we are, are the, the real one, right, or we're the one in the chain that's still evolving to try so, to then make a simulation within their own world, right? So the odds of us being a simulation goes from a gazillion to one. I mean, for, to, to, to the likelihood of the li a, a, a right. Gazillion, right. It flips. It flips. 50-50. Wow. And I'm good with that. That changes my life completely. Yeah. yeah. Okay? 
and no longer are your kids going to say, Dad, it doesn't matter. We're in a simulation anyway. No, you got an argument. Now. Right, you have right. a rebuttal. Exactly. Now, a quick one. You have to do my homework. <laughs> I go, ready? Go ahead. Maybe these simulators have a side activity where they like reminiscing about days before you could simulate. That would be us. So now we're Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. We're right. Pong. We're, <laughs> we're classic. <laughs> yeah. Classic gameplay. <laughs> so, so maybe we're just entertainment, like an historical exercise. Right. That's possible in principle. However, let's look at our own conduct with that regard. Okay. I think of a movie as a simulation, just for, for the sake of which this kind conversation. Of which it kind of, it kind is. of is. Ask yourself, how many movies have been made in a time before we ever knew how to make movies? Relative to movies made in the era where we know how to make movies. You can do the numbers. It's small. Oh, yes, sure. the Spartacus, the, the OK Corral. Three Musketeers. The, yeah, those that, exist. That, that type of stuff. Okay. Okay. If we are any measure of the incentives of creating simulations, which all we can do with movies at this point, then they might have some historical, uh, they, but there's way more interesting things and stories to tell in the era of simulations that exist post simulation. Right. And, the, and the, yeah. So even if there are some period pieces that we might be, still most of these would be universes made after they could simulate themselves. Right. If our movie making habits are any indication of anything. So the chances are we're not a little offshoot, like a little side project. We could be just statistically, it's Probably not likely. Not. Right. Because many, because we're throwing darts. Right. And most of the stories they're going to simulate are going to be the ones that they, uh, that are in the era of the time they could simulate themselves. So that still brings us back to we're probably either the first or we're on our way to being the next. On our way to being the next. That's right. correct. One or that's the other. The, that's more likely than any other possibility here. Wow. And so I'm, I'm so I, I can now rest well at night. So no simulation. Yeah, I'm good. I think I'm real. I think you're real. I think we're good. Well, real recognize real. Thank <laughs> you.